Yeah. So I'm going to call it to order and then say this. Okay. Call this uh, order at the uh, Damaral Board Five Year Plan Committee meeting. Trustee Tony Townsend is attending today's meeting of the Board Five Year Plan Committee remotely due to a temporary or permanent disability or other medical condition that prevents the physical attendance. Trustee Alita Childs is attending today's meeting of the Board Five Year Plan Committee remotely due to a personal matter, specifically childcare. So we're going to have them on the line. Tony is asking me for a link, so. <laughs> He'll be here shortly. He'll be here shortly. Excuse me one second. Turn that away. Technical difficulty. This is a medical testimony. If I can remember, read them. Okay, and Meredith, well, here's your agenda. I realize that I had an important note taker and looking through all of the past five year plan committees, but we actually have Sierra with us as a board reporter. So, what we'll start doing is sharing her notes into that folder. So, uh, we don't actually need that. Thank you, Sierra. Oh, Sierra, we're five minutes ahead with our agenda. <laughs> I was wondering if it was just a one time thing and you were looking for. No, so Sierra comes all Thank you so much for your service. <laughs> and we'll take Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. your, your voices are going in and out. Uh, uh oh. There's, there's Tony. Oh. Is it one particular person you can hear, Alina? No, it's it's well, it's it's. A, I think it might it might be the room itself. The, the the echoing from the room it might be causing some problems. Okay. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's kind of garbled. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> Go off for your feedback and for joining remotely. <laughs> um, I don't have a great solution for that. Uh, we could. Are there people in the smaller rooms? How many people do we have? Our meetings already, we'd have to kick them out. Right. We try to squeeze in to another room, but tell them if they won the lottery. There's a phase of the house program in the back of the room. I think that would mean like a, like a 20 minute delay here. Uh, so if we can power through, yeah, and just, just ask us to repeat basically. And everyone direct your comments towards the hockey puck and from Meredith. Man, I'm going to be the loudest. If you need me to repeat anything, I'm also wearing a mask, so that might not be so helpful. But it it seems like a problem. The usual Zoom problem when it it gets conflicting voices and it, trying to decide who who's who's is who's. So okay. I, I, it seems better when one person is speaking. So all right. So we will Whoa. try our best to one at a time. Be very polite. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. So thank you so much for supplying so much material <laughs> to David. That was, was quite exciting. It's a lot. <laughs> so did we, we wanted to review some of the materials? I mean, I guess people could call out some ones that particularly were yeah, ones that they thought Great. I wanted to make sure everybody knew what was available and how to get to it. So uh, my expectation wasn't that everybody would read every strategic plan in the state, but uh, just so everybody would know where it is for today. Yeah. Okay, because we had Latasha wasn't in our first organizational meeting, although I know you do have access to the folder. Yeah, I double checked. Uh, so just for review, there's a shared Google folder that everybody on this committee has access to. Inside, there's a link to the state's collection of five-year plans, which should be every five-year plan for every library in the state. Although I found one that was a three-year plan. I thought that was very interesting. It kind of Ooh, how about we do that? No, just kidding. <laughs> I, my understanding of the state code is that it's it's uh, not allowed, but uh, it's working for that library. Williamsburg just had one year most of it looked like. So I don't know if they had, say, we're just... They were just yes. one year at a time. Could be. 
We can check with the state on that, um, but we're going to run under the assumption that it is a five-year plan. If we were to not do a five-year plan, that would mean that we'd have to have the committee meet more often. Yeah. So you're just saying that we just would like to just say five years. And, and yeah. well, the idea is that it's a living, breathing document, and we do yeah. try to meet annually get to work on it, make changes. And like last year, the board went through a fairly major review of the entire technology section and changed some other goals. So you know, even if it is five years, we can still build some mm -hmm. flexibility. Mm -hmm. to it. Um, oops, I lost that. Did anyone have a chance to read some of them? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I read a few and they were, it was, in, they were, you know, two pages long to 15 pages long. So it's just, I mean, I read my hometown one and where all my siblings live. So that's <laughs> <laughs> kind of my methodology there. But yeah, it was, it was. I kind of went for larger libraries myself. I was kind of curious how they were doing it. Some of the smaller ones didn't seem quite as applicable. They seemed like, like too few inches or too small, but that doesn't mean we don't have something to learn from them. I found myself drawn to the ones with photos and that were short <laughs> for easy readability. <laughs> um, but Seth and Rappahannock and some of the others have consultant that Oh, oh, David. I'm going to tell you it works with the library. I'm not sure it's not, does it? But, you know, yes. Um, I noticed that Fairfax uh, uses the Ivy Group to collect public feedback, and they included that in there. And that's yeah. the last time JMRL used an outside resource to help develop a plan and collect community feedback. It was the Ivy Group. Yeah, I thought that was interesting to see. Um, I don't think they got a tremendous amount. I mean, they got some, but Fairfax is huge. Mm -hmm. So, um, the other folder in here that's available for you all is uh, just a um, some examples of some of the, the public feedback that JMRL has used in the past. Uh -huh. So just things that I could find in the files here, um, and I did make a list of uh, what. The results were for the last four plans, basically. You can see the earliest of those was the one that the Ivy Group was involved in. So that would have been 2003, probably, okay. around that time. Um, the last two have been online. 2,700 responses in, in 2013 and about 1,600 last time around. Hmm. Uh, so that's a fair amount of public comment. Now we're serving an area that's over 220,000 people so uh out of that group it's a small sample size yeah but i know we had had some, dis some preliminary discussions about engagement so this is how this group has proceeded in the past i love that the one year it didn't look like you offered anything you got 2700 responses and the other years you're like a raffle we only got 60. that's a good point yeah <laughs> maybe they did something no? Might have been more of a push, a publicity push okay. at the time. Um, I don't know. I don't have the specifics yeah. on what worked and what didn't work. Hmm. We did a fair amount of paper surveys, I think, in, in 2013 14, more so probably than we did in the last grouping. Okay. Yeah. So they might have gotten more that way, you know, and give a handful paper copies to Do you know of the 2700, were they fairly widespread between the counties and the city or were they? I'm not sure. You don't have a, results for, uh, you don't have it memorized? No. Well, let me, I'm just going to check and see no. if it's actually. <laughs> or, uh, because that would be what I would be interested in. I mean, I, I don't want us to um, just survey Charlottesville or Albemarle. I mean, we want to, we would want to survey. So this is fall 2012. Uh-huh. And uh, majority, 1,461 from Albemarle, mm -hmm. 600, some from Charlottesville, and then some between 120 and 170 from the free, uh, from Green, Louisiana, and Nelson. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, this was the year we put it on all of the public computers. And then when they signed up, they got a little pop up that said, Would you like to take a survey? So we put it right in front of everyone who's using. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's I, very clever. Um, in the library. In, the li in, in library computer users, if yeah. I recall correctly. Um, so that may have accounted for more because we got it in front of those eyes, but it was a continued use. That would be interesting then if it veered more towards technology. <laughs> using the technology. And that wouldn't really work now because there is a certain 
it's certainly a subset that uses the public computers versus brings their own computers in. They have many more people that just use the Wi-Fi. So if it came up on a splash page, you know, or something like that, so that they would look at that first. So that I guess the question would be whether or not you could do that on the website. You need to do a pop-up. Like come to the when you come on the home page. But it says pop-up. please take our survey and give us sure. feedback. Yeah, and that, that you have to do an X out. Everyone hates that. Do an X out. And then you could tell us how much you hated that in your notes section on Jupyter. We're about making sure we also had paper surveys available because otherwise you're leaving out a segment of the community. And you could and have everyone. Have your, that. Yeah, I mean, you could have everyone on the recep- on the desk say, "Would you like to take a serve?" Like that's you know, would you like fries with that? No, yeah, either. I, mean, I think that <laughs> it's the age old problem then that that we're surveying our current right. leaders. Yeah. Yes. All those things are great, and we do get that's where most of our feedback comes from yeah. from our current users. The the question is always how do you reach folks that could use library services but aren't could benefit from library services either aren't aware or have other barriers, um, and that's where it's that we're going to have to rely on partners, our jurisdictional partners. And I guess I had questions because I know that in our um, city water bill or whatever it is that you can put a things in there. Yeah. And I, my question would be for the other counties, whether or not they have something similar. It depends. We we went we have we've had these discussions with them in the past, but it's been a while, probably four years ago for this. Uh, but I think all of them have some sort of presence, some sort of electronic presence that their constituents can work with. They either have they have social media pages, they have their own website where you might be able to find information about your taxes or whatever it is that people are interacting with local government about. So I think they'd be happy to do that. Some of the things might be mailed, and yeah. then it's a little harder to say, hey, can you stick a survey in with your app or whatever it might be. Is it? No, I mean, do they are they okay with stuff like that or no? Because I mean we get because the city gets has like stuff about city schools, services. Schools They've is given another way to try to get materials home with students yeah. to their families. Yeah, and they all those folks have kind of curtailed that. Like, it's much harder to get information out there than it was twenty years ago. Uh, I think we would propose that one of our subcommittees is just focused on engagement, Mm -hmm. coming up with methodology uh, questions, and we'll make these decisions. My my vision is that our subcommittees will work on specific aspects of this plan and then every other month the decision making will be the full group will just be a report from what they're working on because I think there's going to be a lot of lead over where one group might be working on something and another group is also touching. It would be interesting to know if Weldon Cooper has some kind of insights. I mean, are they have they surveyed these populations before and they might have ideas? I don't know. I think our um, Weldon Cooper is a great resource. I think when it comes to actual survey construction, we are members of the Center for Nonprofit Excellence too, mm-hmm. and they um, they probably it would be a, a charge for us to have them construct something for us, which we could we could certainly do. Uh, but I think as part of our membership, they would review things that we had already constructed as part of our membership. Okay. Because we went through that with some of the name engagement, we had conversations with them about okay. how it would take. Okay. So we're talking about one of our committees. I'm anticipating being on all the stuff. So lucky. That is the fun stuff right now. Yeah. Yeah. You can see here most of the 36%. This is two plans ago. We're from Northside, 24% from Central. Mm -hmm. I I did also notice that one of them, and I can't remember which one, maybe it was York, um, aligned, the goals were aligned to their core values. Mm -hmm. But that's that was interesting. That I was like, oh, okay. Other people have had this idea. Yeah, I like it. Mm-hmm. We're not the first. David, which year is this that you're looking at right now? This is the 2000. Um, the survey was called 2012, so it would have been 13 through five years after that. 18. Okay. Um, I'm just just the point of interest. I mentioned this to the board last week, but the city of Charlottesville was just involved in a. In a satisfaction survey just within the city limits of services provided and of the 30 plus services that uh, people asked about the library got the second highest rating 
So there's like an 88% approval for services and only the fire department was hired. We're going after the fire department. <laughs> We're going to be number one next time. Their engagement was why. Uh, I got something at home for an anonymous paper survey. Very high marks from the library from me. <laughs> oh, uh, so you pushed us over the edge. They had contacted us to make sure that the library computers would be able to access the survey. So uh, we could, oh, all other we could find out that. how they did all that. That's uh, very good. localized. That's right. It's you know, in one of the five jurisdictions. But yes. Oh, that's, a, that's really good. Yeah. That's how good. many people ended up, though? How many people ended up responding to this? I'm not sure out of like what percentage of those exactly. people. I'm not sure they did get a pretty good number back, but I don't know how many they sent out because there what there was like fifty five thousand people ish in the mm -hmm. in the city. So that's a good question, Susan. I'm not sure. Yeah, that would be great to know their their numbers. Um, so the past methodology was use the Ivy Group for um, public. Uh, what they called market research. And it was it was not just a survey of the public, which they did. They also did these leadership interviews, which are very interesting. We still have some of those where members of this committee went out. So the Ivy Group didn't do it before us you know, and sat down with uh, the community leaders and various organizations throughout the five regions and asked a set of 10 questions or whatnot about library services and how they view library services. So I think you were part of that, Krista. I think I saw one that was you interviewing. Um, I can't remember who it was, but it was some, you know, local dignitary around Charles Law, Aubrey Luther, and also you were talking to them. So I thought that was interesting that the kind of the documentation I saw was that like maybe that didn't really guide much of the plan itself, and they got more from the citizen input than they did from that. But you know, good information to have. And then. Uh, Digital only 29 through 14. I'm not sure how many respondents they got. They paid for some advertising for that. Okay. So that's also something the library could do on our own and with other outlets. You know, we have like you can put it on Facebook and do a boost for it. You pay a little bit of money yep. and it gets a wider engagement. Or you could reach out to other groups that have contact information and ask them to share this for a cost. And then online and paper and online and paper, I've already been through the number of responses there. Yeah, you can see of the 1,600 responses for the last survey, only 78 of them entered that raffle. So it wasn't really a, mm -hmm. it didn't really drive. Drop. It was not a big drop, but that was the conversation at the time. Like, how do we entice people to, to fill this out that aren't coming in and already gonna fill it out because they use the library and they're interested service. So um, I don't think that we had specific peer library information because for surveys or uh, oh, here we go. I did break out just our peer libraries there, which are the ones that we've identified based on their size, service area as being the closest to JFR throughout here. So if you needed to specify um, and look at, at, at just a few, although this is still nine, uh, these are the ones that we use to compare ourselves to when it comes to other metrics. I don't know how they went about collecting information there, but certainly we could have we could have a committee that reaches out. They might be willing I to share. I think a better path for that would be to go through the state library, who helps a lot of libraries do this, and they could come and talk about what are some methods to use. That would be great. I did also notice that some of the plans talk about their methodology, mm -hmm. like in they have an introduction part. part right, which is how this is what we did to gather the, our data yeah. and our ideas. So yeah, that that's, that's what I noticed with there. Fairfax. I noticed yeah. that with Fairfax that they had mentioned the ID group and all their similar results. So that's that's nice to see. I did like the fact that Central Rappahannock did a swap. I've done this a couple of times with my team at Northside and actually the branch as a whole. Okay. Straight, we we uh, I'm sorry, but they did a what? A SWAT. That's oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What is that? Oh, strengths, straight weaknesses, weaknesses something, something. Oh, what was it? Threats. Mm. Oh dear. 
Can we change that word out? <laughs> well, sometimes it just means like threats to your success. Okay. Like, yes. Challenges? Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> it doesn't have the same ring, does it? <laughs> um, but one of the things that if we end up with a subcommittee working on on just reaching out to people, then it might be worth having a state, uh, one of the either Reagan or Dan, state library kind of talk about you know, what methodologies other folks have used that they're aware of and also how they could help us do this as well. Okay, so um, anything else on the review? Of it? So, right, there's a lot of material in there to review and I, and, and I don't think Meredith or I expected everybody to have read what's in there, but it's, it's available for you within that one folder. And thanks to the state for putting together that list of that was based on our requests saying, hey, can you help me find these? They said, oh, we've got them all. Let's just share them all. Uh, and you're like, OK, I'll take all. Um, I started in the brainstorming doc, just kind of like, here's how maybe these subcommittees would look as a starting point for us to have this conversation today. Barry, if you're ready to move to that next. I think so, unless anyone had anything else to pull up about the peer material that they thought anyone should look at. No, I, I just, like you said earlier, I, I thought they were not only York, but maybe a few others that just align with their mission statement or their goals yeah. and visions. And I think that just made sense because it just grounds you in what you're all about anyway. So. Because it did feel a little... Um, disconnected when they said, here's what our values are. Okay, now we're going to talk about these following subjects. And it, I, I like that we're sort of saying we're, we're going to really connect these. These are our values. This is what we're hoping to achieve. I thought it makes more sense. Yeah, I, I love it. I think it's a great idea. And, and, I, mean, <laughs> and, I, and I really wouldn't mind also um, looking at a little bit of the way some of the one, more successful ones in our eyes organize the material and possibly use graphics so that it's a really much more of a user-friendly document for our patrons. Something that's more accessible. Yeah, so that you could share it and someone can read it and they can get it and it's not like a dense yeah. text document. I think then we're probably talking about outsourcing some of that work, which is fine. Like we can find budget to work on this, but we don't have an in-house graphics department. It's all Jennifer and the PR department. And yeah, I think probably at that point we'll be trying to identify somebody that was do that. Yeah, and I, and I I'm not saying like a hugely slick piece of material, but I, I I was really attracted by the ones that I was like, oh, I get it. I've got to read it, and I can skim it over, and I get it really fast, as opposed to feeling like I have. To I think that's in line, kind of, with what I was saying in our last meeting. That I personally am interested in simplifying. Yeah. The this is a board level document for one thing. So this is the library board saying, here's what we. Are planning for the library to do over the next few years. So it's not, we had the last plan had so much detail, which has been great for staff and we do need that, but it doesn't have to be in this public facing document, which I agree could be more accessible, simplified, and graphics certainly would help with that. Yeah. Okay. In Newport, you use public library system. I went into the peer libraries and just kind of copied all of their goals down for a quick reference. But they kind of did that with theirs with a very basic breakdown. Wasn't that the one pager? Yes. So there's not a lot of detail, but it does kind of have a visual, the visual breakdown. Yeah. And they might have a longer document. They might. Um, I, I, I was attracted by that too. I was like, one is a little short, yeah. nine is too long. <laughs> so I was like, a, yeah. And that's what you were talking about, though, is that some of these on the web, like, with easy access on the library's websites are probably more the public yep. version versus the internal. Yeah. Because when I was going through some of them, I was like. And so I, the model that we talked about last time, Natasha, was what um, the what Kayla Technology Advisory Committee and the Board Technology Committee did. We had this technology goal that just said, see our technology plan. And it was this like five page thing, very detailed, like we're going to buy this software, we're going to plug in this thing, you know, and they took it and distilled it into uh, a few goals that the board had. It was how technology was going to improve access, things like that. And then Kayla kept a, a version for staff, which is like, okay, here's how we're going to meet those goals. Yeah. So I'm interested in seeing something like that process. This is the one you're talking about. 
Yeah, it doesn't look so great online though. I think it's your it's your thing. I think that was green, not fluorescent yellow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh your pin out. There we go. I was good. Yeah. It'll be fine on soon. It looks good. Right, Haley and Tony. Did we lose Alina? Uh oh. No, you just she don't see her. There she is. You were hiding. You were hiding behind this. I'm here. Okay. You. All right. Um, so, can we talk about how to organize our smaller groups? Yes, please. Which is also the discussion about. So you had a little bit of a. So here's our one, two, three, four, four. Right. So these are our values. Right. These are the, the front sentence for each of our um, JMRL's values. We serve our community. We provide free, equitable, open access to information. We inspire lifelong learning, and we cultivate a welcoming environment for community engagement. I, I can say that when I originally said something about the values, I'm not sure, or this this could work, but in Tennessee, because I am concerned that you keep using the word shoehorn, it could be that we have a collection related goal in more than one value and a facilities related goal in more than one value. Using the values to structure sort of groups of goals, I think would be is a really good idea, but we might, and I don't know if that makes it more complicated. Um, but I'm not sure if we have to do the whole collection is just under one value. I guess I was more thinking about the organization of this group. Yeah. You know, and clearly you're going to be involved in the collection yeah. subcommittee, yeah. right? Yeah. So whatever yeah. that's going to be, and Caleb's going to be in the technology one, and the rest of us are going to have the fun stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> So Jesus, technology is fun. fun. So I'm, I'm interested in, okay, well, how are we going to organize yes. that work? Yes. So it's either, in my mind, it's either split it by the values or split it by the same categories that we had before and then break those up into right. the values. Yeah. So for a legible document. For a legible document to yeah. the public. So that we need to decide today. Yes. Well, what if we said we are going to do these four committees based with the, our four values? And that people could come forward and say, here's my argument for why collections also belongs here. And here's what we feel like the direction we want. Like, and that could be, you know, I, I think I don't under I don't I don't see why under we inspire lifelong learning if we said collection, we couldn't also say in there, and this will also meet technology goals by doing X and doing what da 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 and say how it's inclusive in. All of those. I yeah, mean, I, in the description of each. I think group. I'm interested in how we're going to focus the work for the yeah. group now, and then after the fact, being able to split it up and saying, "Well, we've got these four kind of collection goals, but one actually belongs more with with serving our community, and another one belongs more with lifelong learning." Right. You can do a swap, but then you have to take trade. something out. You have to do a trade. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. And I think using, <laughs> using the values to drive which goals we're choosing within facilities or collection or technology saying we're coming up with this goal because it gets us closer to this value right is that i think i think i think we're gonna also see how we with facilities how we can get closer to all of our goals <laughs> well like, i think there's going to be a lot of crossover in, in, in some of those you know like it, like for your facilities your your staffing is going to it's going to hit the staffing and your technology it's going to hit just about everything yeah, I think I think you're right about that, Alina. You know that that I think this is more a, a way to pick who is going to work on what for now, and then we're going to have to come back later and kind of move them around between the the various values. Is that kind of what Meredith you were trying to say? Yeah, or also, you know, I could come up with goals that relate to technology and to collection if I'm on the subcommittee that's inspiring lifelong learning like I, i'm not yet offering a solution i'm, I'm sure they're complicated <laughs> but i think what you're Which trying talks. to say david is that somebody needs to talk about what our yeah. goals for finance collection facilities are yeah. and so we're going to divide into groups and here's some proposed topics for each so of those groups and then after that we'll maybe say hey collection maybe isn't in the right spot for yeah. the spread but at least a group has worked on I, it. I, absolutely. Yeah, it's really fun. I, just I think it's either them. that or split up into the same six groups that we used before, and we don't really have enough bodies for that. It's more uh, 
And I don't want, I, I, my only concern here is that, you know, sending people off and then bringing them back together, you would lose some of the cohesive nature of like, oh, Susan's already talking about this in her group. So I think it's important. The biggest thing is that we're going to get together every other month and share everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that if yeah. there is a conflict at that point, we could start to say, actually, this belongs more with what you all are working on. Yeah, I do. I just want the, the folks who, for instance, the folks who are on the subcommittee that, to serve our community, I don't want them only to be thinking about staffing. Yes. Like they can also be thinking about goals related to facilities and collection technology or whatever to fits that value. Yeah, I think that's to Alita's point. I think that's what I was. Crossover. Yeah. yeah. And one other thing about just if we're talking about the categories is that I noticed some of the plans had specific programming goals. Did we have, and I know that we had comments about programming in previous plans, but it's not like pulled out. Is that in access and outreach? Access and outreach. Okay. okay. Yeah. That was August. Go ahead. I kind of wanted to say that I think that programming could be its own like kind of offshoot. And I don't, I don't necessarily know, I don't know how to organize the subcommittees, but I don't think they need to be tied to a specific, like, I think we should, I think maybe our strategic plan could be plan, like organized that way, but I don't know if it necessarily makes the same sense to have our working groups tailored that same way. Does that make sense? Okay. Like, Do you have a proposal for how to organize them? No, I'm still mulling it over. But I think because there is so much crossover, the groups might just need to be focused on like specific things. And then the, their, I don't know, their, like we can decide where they go after that and kind of. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's kind of what the attempt was here was to take the six previous categories, which are staffing, access and outreach, technology, finance, collection of facilities, and divide those up into four groups. And then, you know, they're roughly in these values, but then we're gonna have to come back and figure out where individual bills belong afterwards. So the group would be, we provide three, it would be the equitable open access information, and they would be focused on access and outreach technology and maybe finance. Well, that's a lot for one. Could we uh, use this framework just to say, okay, this is a good framework for our subcommittees and have a first meeting and kind of see where everybody feels, come back with the whole group and say, this is either working well or we need to redefine how we're doing this. Haley, what do you think about that? I think that sounds good. I also wonder too, like at this stage, maybe we have one group that's specifically looking at peer libraries one group that's specifically looking at how to get um, like our survey, like our, our, our survey group. And then like once we've got more of the input together, then we can break them out into, I mean, then those groups can be working on, I don't know, like I, I don't think our subcommittees have to be static either. Like we could have a group of people working on one aspect of gathering information at this stage, right? I think it would be easier though. I see what you're saying, Haley, but to me, I think it would be easier with the, the subcommittees if that committee itself focused on gathering the information from the peer committees, because then you know what your group is really focusing on and looking and it doesn't pull your, your attention in too many directions, you know, like so, if it's facilities, the facilities group goes and reviews the peer libraries and looks, focuses on the peer library information about facilities versus everybody trying to pull something in from everything, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I see that point. That makes sense. But you're right um, that some we have to have a limited group probably to study engagement and the yeah. survey. And you mentioned that in the welcoming environment for community engagement. I mean, this was just to break up like yeah. assigning duties. So, so that one group will be focused on whether they're going to meet with, you know, other, you know, to try to figure out what other people have done and, and bring back some possible. And these are not, this is just a, a you know, spaghetti on the wall, basically. Um, that's not the right metaphor. <laughs> uh, this is just like, okay, here are the categories that I think that in the past, JMROD is very successfully used as like, here are the core 
items that we need to think about for our next five years. So I would like, however we split up in the subcommittees, I would like each subcommittee to have at least one of those to, to work on, regardless of whether or not we tie them to the values now, Haley, or if we come back and do that later. And then I think engagement, which I think peer libraries and surveying and engagement kind of work together. Yeah. In that sense. Yeah. I, it seems like to me that if the six areas served you well in the past, yeah. that that's where you start. And then once you get that established, then you break it off into your goals and your values. Which is, I think was kind of what Meredith was suggesting as well. So Rather than trying to peg them into a specific thing. Because we don't know what to find. Either. Exactly. So let's six things. So our committee is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and sometimes eleven members. Uh, six subcommittees, I think, is too much, right? I think so. Some things are bigger than others. Is that four. well? Oh. They're all our children, and we love them. We have our favorite together because I know finance has been separated out, but it's like. Those are our resources, are the staff and the finance. I think that that, um, in the sense that over 75% of the JMRL's annual budget is staff, is personnel, that those two do dovetail together. Although finance and facilities also dovetail together, but um, if facilities has its own thing, then that's a good suggestion. That makes sense to me. At least for people who are coming up with the. And if you were working with staffing and finance, could you pull AJ in? Sure. Because he's the one that's going to be specifically engaged with the finance part and will know some of the overviews of what he's looking at. I think that's a great point in general, specifically about AJ, but also about the need to bring in, um, you know, if we're going to have a bunch of uh, goals here about children's services, then Megan needs to be involved in those discussions so yep. we can have them join the subcommittees to work on things there. That will make our subcommittees larger. <laughs> that was useful. Yeah, we need yeah, we do need. Them. So I think, um, David, I think it was actually really useful for you to organize it this way. But I think that I would love to have people, as they look at facilities, talk about how do facilities serve our community, how do we provide free open, how do we, and then have goals coming out of our um, values, okay. and then maybe we can see if it steers more towards one or the other and how we could maybe organize that later. So then we would be talking about groups that would be um, like one on staffing and finance, one on access and outreach, which includes programming. And then just maybe that and the collection go together better. Does that make more sense? But I think, I mean, where are you saying we look at it like as just like, what are the things we need to serve our community? What are the things we need to provide equal access? Like, I think it's less like each group is the we, is the we part. And then we yeah. come up with all the things and then divide them. I think almost like a matrix, like mm -hmm. within staffing and finance, answer these four. Yes. Uh, and what are the goal for each one? Mm -hmm. Kind of like uh, scattered stories. What is that game? Where you have the, <laughs> that's better for each other. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so each subgroup, according to those that you just typed up, um, will will address, will attempt to address with a goal. The goal, each of our the values, values, our values within values. those, and then and that will be just a way to then at least get a get a get a working document. You this, like, this sounds okay. like an answer to me. Yes, it sounds like a good strategy. Okay. So that would be, and okay, so how about these groupings of those general? So a separate one for community engagement, which would be working, looking at the peer library data, working on surveying, reaching out to the state library and to the other resources we have, starting to come up with, obviously that group can't come up with survey questions until they start to talk to the rest of the groups about you know, what the areas are they've been focusing on. Um, but we can review our old data and look at some of those questions. And things. So that's kind of its own thing. It's not tied to those six areas. So how is this for a split? Staffing and finance, access and outreach and the collection, technology and facilities. And programming goes with access and outreach. And, and we can change these headings, you know, if, if uh, 
that's certainly these are the ones that we have used for 20 years, which doesn't mean that these are the right ones to use moving forward. It's just what we have. Your committee can work on voting and then change, <laughs> <laughs> subject change. <laughs> just don't take anybody else's stuff. And then we will ask each subcommittee to focus on these four values within their kind of areas. And then once we've got data there to kind of Alita and Meredith E and Haley's point, then we can decide if we want to try to break them out or if that doesn't right. work, or if that doesn't try work something, something else. else. Yeah. Yeah. A different visualization. Okay, so you're you're saying that uh, one one group would be staffing and finance, and that yeah. group would say, how how can we serve our community under yep. staffing, and, and then and how can we provide free blah blah blah, and how can we inspire lifelong learning, and how can we do that, and then maybe the and 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 I think it's going to all uh, eventually come like like a you know the tumble together because um i think if uh, in if each one of these committees add, answer those same questions we're going to get a lot of the same answers <laughs> well they're going to be focusing on on their specific areas there so what do we need in terms of what do we need from the staff or to provide to the staff in order to serve our community, give life on learning? What do we need financially in order to meet these values? And the other group would be looking at it. So yes, there will be definitely some bleed over, you're right. But I think that there's enough of a focus, Alita, that there, if there's bleed over, that's okay too. And then those would be yeah. one thing. I think, yeah, I think even that would be good if two different groups come up with the same kind of goal it's it really is a, a good one right yeah <laughs> it would reinforce that idea but also you know usually with fire plans you the internal you know has your goals objectives your strategies i really see those values potentially even going under those goals as our objective based on the value in that goal and then the strategies under that so even though we're Kind of putting the values of these subhead the on this main headings, it could be because there's so much crossover and because has, if they're a little bit different than the values of other organizations, they may actually structure, we may find these structure better as putting them down further as the objectives of the goals in that sense. Yeah, I agree. And I think that I don't want to get, so I'd like subcommittees to meet and start talking about these things, review previous plans and, and talk, just have a conversation about like, where are we in terms of finding our staffing? Like what, what are our needs and look at the state standards in the planning for professional excellence, which I have not put in this, um, in the shared folder, but should be there is state libraries document about like how, how you plan. Um, and I don't want to go too far without beginning the community engagement too, because asking the room full of librarians how the library is going could get you one set of answers. But we do need to try to reach out to make sure that we're meeting the needs of our communities too. So I think that I don't want to commit to too much until we have a plan for, for that engagement as well. I think this is a great place to start, start conversations and then like community engagement group will hopefully come up with some strategies for how to communicate or ask. And then the other committees will probably will have to help with questions around, but after they've been meeting, I hope that they will have more of a, they'll have the quite maybe they'll have more of a sense of what the questions they want to ask are. Does that make sense? I think it's great. Yeah. Okay. And I think to Pearl's point, you know, if we come back in two months and say, you know what, this is not, this is not working. This is not working. Or to Alita's point, if we all come up with the same thing, because <laughs> <laughs> we need more money. Then, uh, yeah. So should we start drafting people for this? Do you have a hat with numbers? No, no, it's fine. Sort of. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't know if Meredith and I are allowed to be on the same committee. I'll just, I'll just <laughs> but I don't love this section. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, Natasha. Thank you. <laughs> Ooh, Haley, tough choices: staffing and finance, or access now reaching collections. I know what she wants. You're muted, though. We can't. We can't hear you, Haley. 
Thanks. I, yeah, I really want staffing and I, I don't feel any, any inclination towards finance. <laughs> so, but I also feel very strongly towards the access, the access one. Can I be on two? I'll be on two. <laughs> Is that a lot? People in four categories and it's just going to be like one or two people. Yeah, yeah it's going to be hard. If we don't I think we are going to have to I think Katie's going to draft more people. No? I'm happy to help with the survey stuff because right. I did want to stand. Yeah, and I'm interested in community engagement also. And I have no discernible skills, David. So <laughs> <laughs> I think the friend, I mean, and you are a liaison to this group. Yes. Also, so we're not. Well, I would think community engagement or the staff of finance as, yeah. as a financial partner. <laughs> And I, I I have nothing I have I know nothing of technology so I don't know if that'd be a great place for me so <laughs> staffing or or community engagement either one or you know whatever so Alita between those two staffing and finance maybe we've had some discussions about staffing and yeah. needs there does that make sense yes I will join Alita on technology and facilities uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I was going to say I also can relate to technology being on the tech and also uh, digital collection. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Sorry, it's a double Meredith. I know. We just didn't want Kayla to be all by herself. She was feeling that. Okay. Yeah. So Susan Haley and Alita, Safi and Finance, uh, Meredith Dickens and Haley, Access and Outreach and Collection. And I could be on that one too. Yeah. Yeah. That that is and I'm supervising the people that we're gonna Yeah, they're gonna want to pull in so that you can help facilitate for David, you said that uh you said that um Angela had been on this committee. Is it have we talked to Megan about maybe joining it? Is it too soon after she just started? No, I, Angela was not actually on the committee, oh. but she worked on individual goals. Okay. So, uh, you know, the committee would talk about things and say, hey, this seems like a good idea for children. And then we would bring it to Angela and she would help boards with it and also make sure that it was in line with what children's was doing. So I think we could we could have something similar to that. And, you know, if it, if it turns out that there's a need in okay. the bigger group, then we could have people join the bigger group. But to, to the point um, that Susan made about bringing AJ in for finance, like, I think we should start with them at the center committee level and then take it from there. Okay. Um, is it possible when access outreach and collections gets to outreach, I could be part of the outreach part? So what I'm hearing. Or is that going to be engagement? Are you talking about survey? No, I'm, I'm talking about outreach oh, services. Yeah. What I'm hearing is that you would like to join a second subcommittee. Yes, but only when you're <laughs> working on outreach. That's that's we'll do what we can there. I don't okay. know what the first organizational meeting will be like. You may or may not get to specifics okay. of that. So. Okay. I imagine there's going to be a lot of cross pollination in our big meetings. We'll be able to share ideas okay. as well. right, and then see where they may be. But I none of us are locked out of, of any. I'm so looking forward to coordinating folders for all of you. <laughs> Your Google skills are amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Tony, flip in and out of those as you, as you see fit. Uh, if there's something in particular that you want to make sure that you're in. Uh, these are not, these subcommittees generally, I don't see any that have more than one board member. So they won't be public meetings necessarily. We won't necessarily uh, record them or notice them just so that the groups will have a little flexibility to be virtually too, so that people don't have to commute throughout the region. Um, yeah, uh, stick stick me on technology and facilities. Okay. So now we have two board members. That's okay though. Two is fine. Yeah. Okay. And we can certainly. It, it just means an extra level of preparation to have three. It just means that it has to be publicly yep. noticed, and we would want to make sure that yep. we have it's available for people to to listen in on. Um, if it's a smaller working group with less than two, then it doesn't necessarily. Two, two, or two or fewer. Yeah. Thank you. What did I say? Well, less than two. Haley, were you raising your hand or you just? Okay. All right. How does that sound? Okay. Good discussion. I like it. You need to plug me in anywhere else. Tasha is volunteering for 
I'm most interested in your previous experience in community engagement at the museum level. So that's that's the one place yes. I definitely want to. And I think in finance is the only one three. Everyone else has four. Want to do static finance as well? Yeah, I think about that. I didn't mean to say that was it. It's just noticing. I do. Too. Oh, yeah. I thought I was imagining AJ on that. <laughs> Again, I think as like yeah, like with Megan stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, stuff coordination, but not an official Megan. And so they were just to just to your idea was that like next month we meet with our subcommittees. Yes. And then we don't meet with this committee until the following month or that, that was the thinking. So I have a proposed schedule here. Okay. Which is just every other month with the full committee. Okay. This is a lot. If you're on two subcommittees and you're meeting twice a month and then you're yep. meeting once yep. the next month. So you know we'll have to see whether or not this is a manageable workload. Okay. Uh, this is this is the we call this the Haley Tompkins model. This is how the um, the training committee works at Jim yep. Morrell. There's a big committee meets every other month. Subcommittees meet in between and then come back and share. Yeah. So this would mean, oh, I would like to uh, have somebody be a lead for each one though. They would be the person kind of responsible for making sure that the group is is meeting and um, you know ready to present to the whole group. So for staffing and finance. Going once, going That's once. okay. So I think Meredith the for the collection and access and outreach. Is that okay? Sure. I'll do staffing. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> and I think Kayla, you get I got volunteered. Okay, that works out perfect. Um, and then so yeah, we would expect I guess <coughs> they would either take notes, someone take notes so that they could do a little report. Yeah, and Sierra will not be available for every subject. <laughs> so somebody should take some notes in your group. Yeah. Uh, and all I'm really asking for the, the coordinator there is to set up a meeting, you know, mm -hmm. just to set up and make the report and, and make or the start the report. Yeah, start the report and yeah. everybody else will be there. So, yeah. So, um, the overall schedule, and, and this is just not written in stone right now, but this, this was my initial thinking about it. So, it'll be in April, these subcommittees would meet. In May, all the groups meet to share. Um, and then potentially finalize public input format. I don't know if that's realistic or not. That's that's a pretty quick turnaround. I guess what I was thinking is at that point we would decide, okay, here's what we're gonna do. Not to say we've started it, but it's gonna be like we're gonna do a survey or we're gonna do, we're gonna hire this outside group, or we're going to do this or that. Mm -hmm. June subcommittees, July. Um, I was focused on the on the surveying there. Uh, but I think that's be, a little soon for a survey, it David. I would say, yeah. I, surveys always take much longer than you think. Okay. We don't have to, this doesn't have, we don't yeah. have to have, here's what we're going to do. Maybe I just don't want to feel like we're behind and this just started. <laughs> <laughs> the survey schedule can be a bullet point in next month's subcommittee community engagement meeting, perhaps. The survey schedule specifically. Survey in, schedule. In uh, May meeting? April. Well, in April, April, the community engagement folks will meet and they can strategize a schedule for surveying. Yeah. And see what they want to do. I think it would be worth to sort of pick out some of the plans that have done it and see if any of them were successful too. Yeah. Because I would say, I would say, I think Fairfax did something like 8,000 responses, but their area is even larger it's large, but they probably had some sort of tool or, or they use the ivy they group pay something they, they, they paid somebody group. yeah ivy group will do at one point they did phone surveys too where they were and that's probably not a thing anymore I'm sure that <laughs> it is so <laughs> it is if you want to reach a certain demographic <laughs> yes well, um, um and then in august you know, maybe we'll start drafting some goals. And I remember we're trying to keep them broad. It's not going to be like, okay, we're going to, you know, we're going to fix the back door at, at Northside. So that it doesn't, it's going to be, you know, we have an overall, this is the, we'd like to see whatever we were trying to accomplish by fixing that back door. <laughs> Safety. Uh, this was already early, right? So this would be, November, we have a draft ready, which is nothing. Okay, so for the overall timeline, our current plan goes through June of next year. 
So the board doesn't need to adopt anything. The latest they can adopt something would be June 2024, and it would carry them through the next five years. So this is finishing six months ahead of that. Now, the full board is likely going to want some time to discuss and to revise or whatnot. So we should be done early 2024, but November is probably a bit aggressive. I do think that's why we probably want to figure out how we're going to do the community engagement with surveys or whatever source sooner rather than later, yeah. because you don't want to get so far down the rabbit hole that you are having to yep. run back up and redo a lot of work because you realized what you thought was a great direction may not mesh well with the feedback you're getting. So. Yes. So none of this is binding or has to stick right now. Um, and I think if we just start with, uh, okay, let's do every other. So we can we can set a, um, a May meeting for this group now, and then the subcommittee leads can kind of pick a time next month. Doesn't have to be next, but it could be at the end of this month. You know, sometime between mm -hmm. now and May. Meet. Does that work? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that works. Okay. Um, and we don't have to pick a time in May either now. Um, it's two months out, so for this full group. For the full group. But as long as everybody is on board with that, so that means that uh, Susan, Meredith Dickens, Kayla, and Natasha will be in touch with their smaller groups in order to come up with some time to meet between now and the beginning of May, and then be ready to prepare to uh, report back. Are you imagining that that meeting would be another hour and a half, or do you think, how long would you think that they should plan to meet? Like a three-day retreat? <laughs> where can we go to i don't know where can we go? Uh, the sky's the limit on the front door i think for an initial meeting <laughs> probably an hour to kind of get organized and to, to i think it's it's going to depend on the subcommittee and it's going to depend on what the task is at hand for each of them why what is it thinking about it well no i'm just curious because it feels like we've grown at community engagement sort of a big task yeah to do, and I'm not sure if in an hour one meeting is going to get you there. I Unless you guys have already been like, no, nope, we're doing a survey. We just have to figure out how we're doing it. I don't know. I already have quite a bit of experience from when I was a museum professional doing this for strategic plans. So I do already have a lot of different ideas of what we can do. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I'll probably throw those out even before the meeting and, and say, you know, if you have other suggestions, <laughs> I'd like to try and gather in a little bit of information before so that our first meeting is as productive as we can. And maybe we can try, Latasha, to meet earlier in April so that if we get to the end of a meeting and say, oh boy, we're- you know, We yeah, still haven't we're decided. Yeah. Not doing book sale. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I, I would think that the, the each each group yeah. would have a different uh, different timetable. You know, some uh, like one group, like the staffing and finance group, may be able to to do what they need to do. We need to do uh, within an hour, hour and a half. Uh, but say the access group might need two hours. So yeah, I, I think each each group would probably need to uh, set that. Uh, set that uh, range yeah. yeah, so why don't we give it one, a first meeting for each group, you know, maybe schedule it for an hour and a half just in case and then, because I think we're going to be done today short of an hour and a half. Yeah. Um, so, and then did you have any thoughts on sort of an agenda for some of these? I mean, I also think it would be good to have parameters. So it, it's one thing if the finance people are like, we need an extra $200 million. <laughs> but if you say, you know, we never go above 5% in there, but whatever it is that you, that it might be useful for them to have at least an idea of like, David, did you say you're going to be in all the meetings? I don't so you can direct that. You can direct that. You can bring us back. Um, director is what it says. Yeah. Um, I hear you. So that so yeah, I, I will try to be in each one because I have probably the, the fingers in the most yeah. eyes there. So well, um, I think that would just be helpful because I think it's really hard to just say like, oh yeah, like yeah, to serve our community better, we need more money. Right. Right. But if we're not going to get more money from our partners, well, I think then... one of the things that we need to do is each group needs to review previous yep. previous five year plan. If if only the last one, you know, and then the other is the uh, I'll share with everybody from the state 
on strategic planning, yep. basically, because uh, it will have some guidelines there. Because like facilities specifically, uh, you know, we're not going to build a new Nelson Library in the next five years, right? Because mm -hmm. we have a beautiful brand new Nelson Library. Should the Central Library be renovated in the next five years? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Should it have been renovated in the last five years? Yes. <laughs> so uh, there are some kind of things that 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 the board already is aware of that, and that are on the books for those that the group that's working on should be aware of. And whether or not we have a goal that says renovate the central library, or if the goal from the board is offer the, the most state-of-the-art best library facilities to our community. You know, I think that's where we're trending is the larger yep. picture there yep. rather than the specifics. And so that then each of the branches with your with you will talk about how you do that. Yes, yes. And we've got a lot of good data now that we're working on from branch managers about the facilities needs of their buildings. So, you know, whether it's the the um, the drive up window going into Gordon Avenue or if it's the potential use of other spaces at the Crozet Library or things like that. Like we've got internal documents that we can also share. But okay, so I got so, straight from your question. No, but I think actually this is, this is good because what you brought me back to is the fact that we are going to talk about this as we're going to talk about more general goals than minutia. Yeah. So I don't need to, if I were on staffing and finance, I don't need to start talking about money amounts. Right. I need to talk about if AJ is on the committee and AJ says, you know, in order to meet whatever, you know, it, it would do better in finance and help and connect, you know, serve our community better, we need X. I need this kind of, yeah. And it's to push in this it, different direction. Right. And then, then that way we'd sort of be trying to come with a general goal that helps. Yes, so specifically for staffing and finance, like we know that right now, Jay Morrell is part of the, uh, the staffing survey that the city of Charlottesville is working on, that's gonna come back with uh, suggestions based on peers across the, across the world, basically for what uh, our salary scale should be. Okay. So um, it's not that we need this dollar amount to fund this thing. I think the overall goal would be about ensuring that library staff are you know, in the same lane as their peers across the state or the country or whatnot. So it would be the broader, like we want to offer the best library service. We have to have an adequately funded staff yeah. figuring out how to, how to make that into a goal. With so retention than, and retain them. Yeah, yeah. for retention, yeah. which Haley mentioned a few times in our last meeting. So it's, yeah. the goal is not about a dollar amount or percent or things okay. like that. It's it's let's make sure we're and I'm I'm not using great words to describe mm -hmm. that, but you know, we know on the details end that we're gonna get this data and then it's gonna be my job and the library board's job to work with our jurisdictions to fund that. So it should be a goal saying we need to make this happen, but the goal is about providing adequate staff to serve the community. Right. Good. Thank you. That was helpful. Well, and I think that your potential schedule, that's nice. That's a good word to put before our schedule. Um, that we'll just have to talk once, once the engagement group comes back about whether or not this is realistic in terms of the speed of getting out a survey. Yeah. Um, but you know, quite honestly, I, I do surveys too. And, and, you know, it's pretty easy to do, <laughs> you know, to set it up yourself. It's just, the question is, what are your questions that you're providing? Yeah. How are you getting it to people? Those are the things that we're going to definitely lean on you and your experience to talk about because I don't, I don't survey those communities. And every five years we focus on how do we reach the people that are, are not at the library? Not Why are you not using the library? What can we do to bring you in? And we get, you know, we identified five years ago there were there were common themes of transportation. Um, there were, they, you know, there, there, you, you did see the information there. And because of that, we've got we're offering things. You know, we're hoping to expand on outreach services. Susan finally is going to get uh, an outreach vehicle for Nelson County. You know, so we also want to loop Marion in for the outreach section too. So. Anyway, um, so what I will do today is send everybody a link to that state document and this list of who's in what, what subcommittee and who the leads are there. And then I'll lead it to those leaders to try to convene a time.
to meet. Yeah, you don't need to send the list. It's here in the document. Yeah, it is, but you know, just for ease of access. And you did not want to try to find the time in May. We'll do that. We'll we do that, but it'll also give a little flexibility, I think, for the subcommittees to figure out, like, if if one of them comes back at the end of April and says, "Hey, we're going to try to meet again at the beginning of May," then we could push the committee meeting. Okay. I think this is a great start. Mm -hmm. It gives us some focus, some definition about what to do moving forward. Awesome. All right. Is there anything else on our agenda? I just brought up the proposed schedule of meeting. <laughs> so oh, well, that, well, that, you know, every other month. <laughs> every other month. Every other month. Every other month. That's our proposed schedule. Well, you know, your your subcommittee is going to meet on those other months. Yeah. Yeah. He knows, <laughs> but it'll be on Zoom for mm -hmm. sure. For sure. Um, well, it's great to see most of you in person. Yeah, thank, thank you for coming. Thank you. And um, if no one has anything else to add, I propose that we adjourn. Not that it's gorgeous weather, it's really sunny. <laughs> <laughs> anything from anybody else? No, I don't have anything. Thank, thank you. All you. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> Bye. I'm getting on just to say goodbye. Bye, Tony. Bye, Tony. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Lena. Bye. See you, Bye. See you next month or this month. <laughs>